Today I wanted to sit down and talk to you about Talk to you about my cat walking in front of the camera. Hey guys, so today I just wanted to sit down and talk to you about our TTC slash infertility journey so you guys can get to know us a little better. But I just wanted to share my experience so far and my story of what we've been through and how long we've been trying what treatments we've done so far, and what's next. Okay, so question number one. These aren't really numbered questions, but first, how long have we been trying? We've been trying to have our first baby for just over three years now. I took my last birth control pill the day before my 28th. 8th birthday and I just turned 31 a couple weeks ago <laughs> so three years infertility is defined as the inability to conceive within one year of having unprotected intercourse so by definition we've been dealing with infertility for three years now we when we started trying we started out probably like most couples um, not trying but not really preventing so we were like if it happens it happens so after about like six to eight months of nothing happening i started to do more research i started reading all of the online like ttc forums and learning it all about ovulation i downloaded downloaded you know a cycle tracking app so i can track my cycle and also my fertile window. I started using OPKs, uh, we bought pre-seed, we tried everything. A couple months after the one year mark, we ended up moving from Pennsylvania to Texas. So that kind of like took our mind off everything. We were still trying, but we had other things to keep us busy. So as we were approaching the two year mark, I just knew that something wasn't right. It shouldn't take this long for us to get pregnant. Most couples get pregnant within three months. We were almost at two years. So I made an appointment with a reproductive endocrinologist or a fertility specialist um, just to get checked out. Mike fought me the whole time, you know, he said, there's nothing wrong with us, we don't need to see a doctor, we're fine, it'll happen. But I mean, during those two years, nothing. I would always wait for my period to be late, and it never was. So at the first appointment, I, the first thing I got was an ultrasound just to check out my uterus, look at my ovaries, make sure everything looked a-okay, and it did. The next thing was the semen analysis. When we were sitting in the room waiting for the results, uh, he was like, this is stupid. There's nothing wrong with us. We don't need to be here. So then the lady comes in and she sits down and she says that she explains that a normal sperm count is 25, 30 million or more. Um, and Mike's count was 5 million. She says that a normal volume is like one milliliters or whatever, his was 0.7. So his count was low, the volume was low. So that was kind of a shock um, to him. But they say that a low sperm count contributes to like 40% of infertility cases. So after that appointment, there was more testing. I, the first thing I did was the HSG. The HSG is where they inject a dye into your uterus and watch it like on a screen um, go through your fallopian tubes and spill out into your abdomen, I guess, wherever it goes, just to, to make sure that your tube, your fallopian tubes are not blocked. So at the appointment, um, when I was laying there, I was watching the dye start to fill up my uterus 
and then just spills into my fallopian tubes and then spills out of them. My tubes were not blocked, they were perfectly open. I was so relieved because I know that that can be a pretty big issue, you know, when trying to get pregnant. So sometime after that, I had the hysteroscopy and that's where basically there's like a little camera that they put up into your uterus <laughs> to look around and see if you have any um, polyps or fibroids or um, I'm not sure if they can see endometriosis with that or not, um, but everything looked good with, with that test too. Now, because Mike had a low semen analysis, um, they wanted to do more testing. First, obviously, was a repeat semen analysis. That one also came back low. He did um, blood work to test his testosterone. That was normal. Um, they did a what's called Y chromosome microdeletion. They did a fructose, some sort of a fructose test to check if there's a blockage. All that came back normal. Now he did have two hernia surgeries, one when he was really young and then one, mm, I don't even know, like six years ago that could potentially contribute to this, but we don't know. So after a series of tests that pretty much everyone goes through when you're starting fertility treatment, we're able to move on to the next step. The doctor, um, didn't really recommend doing IUI, which is intrauterine insemination, because we're, we were dealing with a low sperm count. But we did it anyway. She told us that our chance of conceiving was less than 10%, but we went through with it anyway. So our first IUI was back in July 2019. And it was a medicated cycle. I took Clomid. I had two mature follicles, <clears throat> but his post-wash count was at 100,000, which really isn't ideal. That first IUI that we did did not work. I did not get pregnant. We decided to do another one, give it just one more try, and we moved right into another medicated IUI cycle. And that cycle also did not work. Before starting the IUIs, I was completely against IVF. I wanted no part of it. I didn't think it was fair. You know, I think everyone probably goes through this. Why should I have to go through this? Why should I have to pay $20,000 to have a baby when there are crackheads no offense, but there are people who get pregnant who don't even want their kids. That's how I was feeling at that time. It just wasn't fair to me. Why, why me? You know, I think everyone who's dealing with infertility at some point says, why me? So I was definitely 100% against IVF. I didn't want a fake baby. <laughs> I was against IVF for sure without trying the IUI first. So after two IUIs and probably $4,000 later, we decided that's enough. We're not gonna do any more IUIs. We're just gonna take a break and finish out the rest of the year trying on our own and see what happens. If we still weren't pregnant come the new year, then we would reconsider our options. So that brings us to today. We're still not pregnant. Still not even a hint of a positive test, nothing. What's next for us on our journey to baby number one? I'm happy to say that my mindset has changed and we've decided that we are going to move forward with IVF. Our initial appointment with the doctor is coming up very soon. I now look at IVF as just a means to an end. When you take away the whole thought of it's not natural and it's not fair, 
you start to look at it as this is just a way for me to reach my goal. Hopefully. It doesn't always work out as you hope, but I have faith that this will work out for us. So we have our appointment coming up very soon to talk to the doctor about the next steps. Yeah, so that's uh, pretty much our journey from, well, I was gonna say from start to finish, but it's not over yet. But I just wanna say thank you for watching this video. I hope you'll follow along this journey with us and I'll see you in the next video.